In this video, we will discuss how to improve cyber resiliency for K-12 organizations using AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery, also referred to as AWS DRS, replicates your servers without performance impact using cost-effective resources to keep your applications running in the cloud during a critical event. Over the past few years, ransomware has become all too common in education. Bad actors are targeting schools because they are target rich with critical student data, but often resource poor when it comes to dedicated cybersecurity staff and solutions. According to the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigations, 57% of all reported ransomware attacks are targeted at K-12 organizations during their back-to-school months, which often serve as their most busiest time of the year. Now, this has already had an impact on 2.5 million students in just a three-year span. And unfortunately, that number is set to grow, as Garner predicts that 75% of IT organizations will face one or more ransomware threats by 2025. The average length of an interruption from a ransomware attack is 24 days meaning that students, parents, staff, and administrators could go weeks without being able to access necessary school applications. Now, when it comes to K-12 organizations' path to data protection, most schools invest in backups, which is valuable in retaining important student data, but may not be sufficient for ransomware protection. For ransomware recovery, you want to make sure you're using a solution that has specific protections against ransomware, like point-in-time recovery with immutable snapshots and write-once, read-many storage. And for your mission-critical workloads, such as student information systems, payroll, and ERP systems, not only do you need data restore capabilities, but you also need to quickly recover those workloads to resume normal school operations in the event of a disaster. This is a traditional model of DR options in the cloud. With this model, you had to choose between better performance, meaning paying a premium for lower RPO and RTO, or lower costs by sacrificing on RPO and RTO performance. With AWS, you no longer need a compromise, as our solution can help K-12 organizations meet cost-sensitive budgets, as well as specific recovery requirements all with the help of AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. With AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery, you get key benefits such as faster workload recovery, lower cost focus on actively replicating services rather than idle infrastructure, perform in data protection that meets your recovery objectives, easy testing to ensure the effectiveness of your DR plan, failback capabilities in the event of a ransomware attack, and the ability to add and or remove servers from anywhere as needed. Now, this is a high-level architectural diagram illustrating how AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery keeps your environment in sync and ready for recovery to AWS at any time with very short recovery objectives and significantly reduced total cost of ownership. With AWS DRS, you simply install a non-disruptive replication agent on your source servers. Then, this initiates continuous data replication to an automatically provisioned staging area in AWS. And with the click of a button in the AWS DRS console, you launch your servers into recovery when needed. AWS DRS can be easily set up, which we will demonstrate here shortly. But more importantly, you can start drill testing within a matter of hours. AWS is here to help the K-12 community enhance their security posture on their networks to protect against cyber intrusions, ransomware attacks, and data breaches. Use AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery as part of your ransomware mitigation strategy so you can protect, detect, respond, and recover from events. AWS DRS has flexible usage-based billing 
allowing you to easily use the service by paying on an hourly basis per server instead of committing to a long-term contract or a set number of servers that are normally idle until an event occurs. For example, let's assume your environment has 30 servers with 500 gigabyte volumes and a 5% daily change rate. For a traditional active-active scenario, you would have to factor in around $4,500 per month versus AWS DRS where you would see roughly around $760 per month. Now, given the difference shown here, AWS DRS could serve as a cost-effective option to protect your environment. Here is a use case study spotlighting the challenges at hand and the solution used by Tyler Technologies, which resulted in their ability to recover mission-critical workloads 12 times faster using AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. Now, let's see a demonstration of AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery in action. We've created a mock environment using Amazon EC2 instances that simulate an on-premises data center. It includes a bastion host plus a web and database server name tagged with MID. This serves as a host for a WordPress website and has been affected by a ransomware attack. Next, we will remotely connect to the bastion host and view the affected WordPress site which can be identified with the word compromised embedded on the site. Now we will demonstrate how you can protect the on-prem servers from an event by initializing the AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery Service via the AWS console, which can only be done by someone with administrative access. To start, you define the default replication settings for the staging area consisting of the following parameters you see here. Once completed, the next step is to install the AWS replication agents on the source servers, which has already been done for this demonstration. You will see the servers appear in the source servers tab, which shows details about the replication for this server. Within the launch settings tab, you can inform the AWS DRS service how you want your machine to look like during a recovery or drill. Now, you will select the Initiate Recovery option at the top right screen and choose Initiate Drill or Initiate Recovery. You are now brought to the point in time screen where you can choose a single point in time to launch this machine from. After the recovery job is initiated, you can view the recovered instances in the Recovery Instances tab. For this demonstration, the failover process has completed. Once the recovery servers are in place, you need to change your DNS to point to the new recovery server's IP addresses. This can be found in the instance details of the AWS EC2 console. With the recovery drill completed, and the DNS of the WordPress web server updated off-screen, we will now verify if the WordPress site successfully failed over. As you can see, instead of stating compromise, it now says hello world, meaning we have successfully recovered to a clean back and point snapshot. In addition to the demonstration, here are some recommended resources to better acquaint yourself with AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. Thank you for watching this video.